Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So a couple of times a year, I usually make a video on Tony Bellew. His stupidity, his hypocrisy, his shillery as a pundit, uh, matchroom cheerleading, etc. I usually make a video or two a year on this topic, and one could say, doesn't that get boring? And I would say no. <sighs> so following Artur Betabiev's demolition of Callum Smith this past weekend, Tony Bellew isn't happy. Tony Bellew is insinuating that Betabiev is a dirty fighter. Obviously, the week leading up to this fight, we felt, well, we heard the news about Betabiev having an atypical finding on one of his drug tests. Um, I believe in relation to an elevated level of testosterone, something like that. Um, listen, if you believe in the whole drugs in boxing thing and you want a clean sport, yeah, cool, you can see it as a red flag. I believe all of these guys are juicing, by the way. Ultimately, you guys know my opinions on drugs in boxing and I don't want to reiterate it here. What I want to talk about is the hypocrisy of Tony Bellew. Uh, first and foremost, it's astounding to me that, you know, the YTBC contains many native English speakers, yet they can't, they, they don't know the difference between two separate words. Atypical and adverse. Uh, shout out to the dunces out there, I guess. But Tony Bellew. Let's read Tony Bellew's tweets following the Callum Smith fight. He's a beast, and a fighter who is getting stronger as he gets older, which is hard to believe, but he is. Callum, as brave as anything, a soldier who went there and gave it everything. Faced that monster in his backyard, so frustrated cause I want to say more. He then follows on. Obviously, we want to see B-Roll Baterbiev next. It's a great fight, but please show me a fighter who has gotten stronger with age. He's 39, and he's getting more destructive. Physically, that's not usually possible, but he's doing it. Our great sport needs looking at like baseball was. Well, aside from when it's a matchroom fighter or one of your friends. By the way, he's claiming Baterbiev is getting stronger with age. What does he base this on, by the way? Has he measured Baterbiev's grip strength? Has he, has he, uh, you know, um, measured his biceps? Has he uh, measured his punching power over a prolonged period of time? What what is Tony Bell you gauging this? He where where Baterbiev's getting stronger. How how does he gauge this? By the way, he looks like the same guy he's always been to me. Tactically, he was different against Callum Smith. He was a lot more defensively sound. His guard was tighter. He utilized more lateral movement. So yeah, he certainly showcased some of his technical ability that he doesn't usually show in most fights. Um, but getting stronger with age? Again, people say these things, but he's always been a destructive fighter since his first fight. It's not like suddenly he's scoring different types of stoppages. What Baterbiev did to Callum Smith, we've seen this story before. Against much better fighters like Oleksandr Vodzik. Um, a slow beatdown to the point to where the opponent has nothing left. It's not like he's going in there at 39 and all of a sudden knocking guys out in the first round. So increased strength. Again, I'd like to see Tony Bellew uh, kind of point out how he's got to this conclusion. I'd like to see him uh, actually break it down as to why he believes Baterbiev is stronger now than he was a couple of years ago. Furthermore, Despite the atypical finding, not adverse, atypical, despite that finding, he never failed a drug test. But he needs to be investigated, he needs to be kept a close eye on. Cool. It's always the way when it's a foreign fighter, and in this case, Baterbiev didn't even fail a test. It's always the same though with Tony Bellew. When it's an outsider, they have to be banned for life, they're putting people's lives at risk, this, that and the third, the usual virtue signalling. When it's one of his friends, though, or a matchroom fighter, or just somebody who he's familiar with and likes for whatever reason, uh, there's always some sort of excuse or 
you know, he didn't mean it. He wouldn't willfully cheat. We heard that with Billy Joe Saunders. You know, we heard that with Conor Ben. And by the way, Conor Ben still has yet to be cleared. And yet he's still he's still on Conor Ben's uh, side. He's still shilling for Conor Ben, a guy who failed failed with two adverse findings, failed two drug tests. But Conor Ben's a Conor Ben would never willfully cheat, guys. He's a good kid. He's an honest kid. You know, he wouldn't willfully cheat. Uh, by the way, speaking of getting stronger and, and acquiring more power all of a sudden, we saw Conor Ben getting dropped by a French pastry maker journeyman in Cedric Pianod. In fact, he got dropped, what, twice in that fight? Got beat up and got a gift decision. He then rematches Pianod, still can't knock him out, wins the fight though. Ever since then, Conor Ben all of a sudden, he's been sparking people. How, what, what about Conor's increased strength? To the point to where he was going life and death with 50-50 journeyman, to, to the point now where he's knocking out former sort of fringe contenders. He's knocking these guy, uh, guys out with one punch as well. Conor Ben wasn't a one punch guy on the way up. They, they say power is natural, right? Uh, or a lot of power is natural. Well, why? Where Conor Ben's power increased. He seemed to get stronger. And he failed two drug tests. But Conor Ben... <laughs> Conor Ben's an honest guy, according to Tony Bellew. Okay. Oh, I, I, I saw some people also online uh, say, Why are people going for Tony Bellew? There should be reasons to be concerned about Baturbiev. Listen, if you're one of those people who wants a clean sport and you believe in, like, the sham that is drug testing, yeah, you should be sceptical of Baturbiev. If you if you if you have that kind of um, opinion on boxing and you truly believe in like the drug testing organisations, if you believe it's all above board and you want a clean sport, yeah, you should be sceptical of Baturbiev. But what I don't want to see is people like Tony Bellew virtue signalling. He's a very staunch advocate for strict drug testing in boxing and strict punishments when it comes to fighters who fail tests that he doesn't like or, or, or who are on another promotion. He's all for it then. When it's a matchroom fighter, or, or his friend, not so much. That is why Tony Bellew is getting pelters of abuse. Because we see the double standards, we see the hypocrisy, and we know he's not a serious analyst. He's not a serious analyst. Um, he is a PR machine, essentially. He's a propaganda outlet. That's what Tony Bellew is. And a lot of people are sick to death of it. The guy has no scruples, the guy has no integrity, it's just that simple. If he was consistent on his beliefs across the board, if he was calling out Conor Ben, Dillian White, Billy Joe Saunders, Tyson Fury, then yeah, he's got, he's got a place to talk, but he doesn't. He hasn't been consistent on those guys. But when a foreign fighter or a fighter on a rival promotion fails a test, that's when you'll hear Tony Bellew call for these guys to be banned for life. I mean, we saw this a few weeks ago with the Day of Reckoning. Uh, look at all the vitriol and passive aggressiveness he was spewing towards Jarrell Miller. Uh, same with Povetkin when Povetkin fought Joshua and Dillian White. Uh, the vitriol in which came out of his mouth uh, doesn't match the same that comes out of his mouth when a British fighter fails a test or a matchroom fighter fails a test. Look at what happened with Canelo. When Canelo wasn't with matchroom, Bellew was, oh, ban him for life. As soon as Canelo signs with Matchroom, nothing more gets said about it. He doesn't speak about Canelo with the same vitriol in which he spoke about Jarrell Miller or Alexander Povetkin. Of course he doesn't. But, you know, this is the level of punditry in British boxing. Uh, that's the level. And you see it now rubbing off on fight fans. Uh, fight fans trying to conflate and compare the Baturbiev situation with the Conor Ben situation, those people are either incredibly stupid or incredibly dishonest. Neither one's good, but I'd rather they be incredibly stupid. But I do think they're dishonest. But anyway, that's Tony Bellew for you. To sum Tony Bellew up, there's a show in the UK called I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. And what that show is, a group of celebrities are basically put into a fake jungle uh, for weeks on end, and the public decides who stays and who goes after a week, and eventually somebody is declared like king of a jungle or queen of a jungle after like eight weeks, whatever. 
and they have to like endear themselves to the British public. And that show is basically reserved for washed up, desperate celebrities like Z-listers and shit. And by the way, on this show, they get these celebrities to do like really kind of messed up challenges. So for example, they'll eat like camel's testicles or whatever. That's the, t that's the type of show it is. And to be on that type of show, you have to be some sort of... I don't know, there has to be a lack of like self-respect, dignity, etc. To even consider being on such a show. And Tony Bellew was on it this year. <laughs> that sums it up. That sums Tony Bellew up in a, in a nutshell. He'll say or do anything to keep himself in the limelight. Um, even if it is at the cost of his integrity, etc. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. That's Tony Bellew. Um, and here we are again. Complete hypocrisy uh, from this dance, Tony Bellew. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Peace.